Hi there, this is McKenna Canty. I'm a senior at UMass Amherst and an intern with the New Music Alliance, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping the careers of Western New England artists who write original music. You're about to hear my interview with Grammy-nominated bassist Paul Kochansky. Hi there, Paul. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. The Radio Music Hour listeners would have just heard your cover of um, Jim, Jim Henry's Drive-In Movie Picture Show. So I was wondering if you could, um, like, what inspired you to cover that song and what was the process like creating that video? Well, yeah, so I've known Jim for a, a long time. We played together briefly uh, in the, jeez, I guess it was back in the 18, back in the 1890s. And, uh, <laughs> He had just put out a, a record of his own under his own title under the uh, under his own name under Signature Sounds his record label and Drive and Movie was was one of the feat tunes I think it may have even been the, uh, the the title cut and I remember playing that song with him thinking man this is a great song but would it be cool if if Waylon Jennings covered it because then it would you know I would love to hear Waylon Jennings say our pajamas all have feet and I think just done. <laughs> That would be enough to make that happen. Uh, and then, of course, Waylon sadly passed away, so it was never going to happen. So I figured, okay, I'll take mm-hmm. a stab at it and see if it turns out. And Jim was, uh, you know, very kind to acquiesce and and uh, lend his production and guitaring skills to the to the project. Yeah, it came out really cool. It was, I enjoyed watching it definitely. Great. And um, I know you are uh, really active in the, like, Western Mass, Boston area music scene, and throughout your career, you've gotten to collaborate and play with a lot of different bands and artists. Are there any collaborations like that that you've that kind of stand out to you that you enjoyed the most? You know, it's I'm very lucky. Very, you know, people abuse the word blessed, but, you know, I'm going to do it too. It's, I have been blessed to play with <laughs> With some really great players through the years, great you know singer songwriters, um, I've been playing with Lori McKenna for probably mm-hmm. over probably sixteen years now, and you know I mean she's not a touring machine and she doesn't need any any more than just her voice and guitar to to make magic. So I'm very lucky to to play with her, and every time is it's you know it's it's always incredible just to be. Um, you know, in the company of somebody who is, I consider one of the, you know, certainly one of the greatest living artists of our time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so I dig playing with her. I play, you know, when we'll be all back playing, with Ronnie mm-hmm. Earl, who is a blues guitar legend. And he's just another guy where I can't believe I'm, uh, I'll look across the stage and go, that's going, he's doing that right there. <laughs> um, he, he is, you know, a true, a true legend and, you know, a master of his craft, and for him, every there is nothing ever wasted. He, he, every moment is sacred to him when he plays, and and to be able to experience that with him at the time is yeah, that's that's always a highlight. So mm-hmm. those are those are recent highlights. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, Nice, yeah, and I saw um, your work with uh, Ronnie Earl and the Broadcasters. That uh, that latest album was uh, nominated for the 42nd Blues Music Awards. It was the album Rise Up got nominated for uh, Album of the Year, traditional blues album. I was wondering if you could, uh, yeah, talk about working on that. That was uh, one of the incredible moments, too, where last, uh, last March we were going to get together at Ronnie's house just to kind of run through some tunes as more of a pre-production idea. And uh, the idea was, was to collaborate with Kim Wilson, a great harmonica legend. Uh, Kim wasn't able to make the session. I think he ended mm-hmm. up doing some overdubs on it, but he uh, was not able to make the session, but we were all there anyway. So we kind of set up in, in Ronnie's living room at a flies volume and uh, Huck Bennett, the engineer, brought his laptop in and some mics and, and we figured, well, at least we'll get the ball rolling. And then ended up, you know, a week later, everything shut down. So oh, that, wow. uh, the majority, yeah, the majority of that record was recorded in his living room as a as pre-production, and it's fleshed out with live performances from uh, Daryl's Daryl's house in upstate mm-hmm. New York that had been done maybe about a year or so before. 
so the fact that that record even saw the saw daylight a year later, much less being honored with the uh, with the nominations, is is pretty credi- incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. That's crazy that it was like that. That moment in time, just really strange to look back on a year ago, but. It, it really cool. is, and, and no, and but what what made it not so different that most of Ronnie's recordings are very, you know, that one take. I think you know, in in the last fifteen years, friends who have played with him longer have said that you know, I don't think he's ever let us do a take twice. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so everything is in the moment. So yeah, that is, it's strange as the circumstances were. It's it's very normal for uh, for Ronnie's modus operandi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's funny. <laughs> You're listening to an interview with bassist Paul Kochansky. And uh, going back a few years past in your career, I know in 2013 you got nominated at the Grammys for your work on a Best Children's Album. So I was wondering what that was like and what was it like attending the Grammys that year? Well, that was a pretty special moment. It was. It was uh, nominated with Alistair Mook. Mm-hmm. Boston area singer songwriter who's been making great family music for the you know, better part of ten years now, and that record was uh, singing our way through. It was a, a, a record about cancer. One of his twin daughters had, uh, had developed cancer while she was undergoing treatment and in, dis- in recovery. They discovered playing music together, and he wrote songs that were you know that were about cancer. Now, it walked the very smartly walked the line between being morbid, but at the same time not sugarcoating things, and it was very powerful. Mm-hmm. And it felt great to be recognized for such a for such a pure artistic moment, and then to go to the big circus in L.A. where yeah. you know, we're, we're <laughs> glad handing and all the minions who are who uh, will lose their job unless Taylor gets the nomination. You know, the, the, <laughs> show, the rubbing shoulders with the showbiz, uh, you know, machine was it was it, was, it felt great. And we were uh, we were doubly honored because we were uh, Alistair's record that we put out last year was nominated for this year's Grammys. Oh my gosh, I missed that. That's crazy. That's awesome. The record was called "Be a Pain," and it speaks to uh, kids and future leaders standing up for injustice. And uh, Alistair made the decision shortly after being informed of the nomination that he and three of the other nominees were. Mm-hmm. We're declining the nomination owing to the fact that there was little or no participation from from performers of color for years and years. And uh, he felt strongly enough about that, was kind and uh, respectful enough of his fellow musicians on the record to say, look, guys, I think, I think I'm going to decline this. So he did. Mm-hmm. And, wow. uh, yeah, so we were nominated and uh, uh, twice. I can't say I'm a two-time Grammy loser. (laughs) Two-time Grammy nominee. That's that's quite that's a a cool title, definitely. Yeah, that's really powerful though that he stepped down. That's that's nice. He really did. And let me see, the uh, Okie Dokie Brothers and a band called Dog on Fleas. They also felt the same way. And um, yeah, it, it was. And again, it's where music actually is making a difference and working with artists who who believe in it. So Mm -hmm. it's a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. And I know you've gotten to do some really cool performances in your career. Like I read that you played on the Stephen Stephen Colbert show in 2017 with Laurie McKenna. So are there any really exciting or memorable performances like that that uh, stand out to you? Yeah, that was a great, you know, that was great. It was a you know chance to play you know with her tune "Humble and Kind," which ended up winning the Grammy that year for Country Song of the Year. So uh, again, playing with Laura, she is you know she is pretty incredible. So um, you know she'll bring a new tune in, and if, if I start crying, I figure, oh, it's good. <laughs> um, yeah, other, yeah, other cool stuff. You know, a bunch of you know some interesting shows with Lori. A couple of years ago, I went to Japan with Chris Collingwood, um, valley singer-songwriter whose uh, main band is uh, was called Fountains of Wayne. Mm-hmm. And Chris made a solo record under a band name called Look Park. And mm-hmm. uh, we played the Fuji Rock Festival with him in, this, you know, in 2016. So, yeah, that was a, yeah, that was a great, you know, a yeah. great cool gig. 
That's really mm-hmm. cool, Japan. That's awesome. Yeah, for you know, fly out for one gig, and you know, Wilco and Beck were on the on the bill, and <laughs> and, then, cool. and then we went home. <laughs> that sounds that's really exciting. That's awesome. And uh, I was wondering if maybe there's someone growing up or like a musical influence for you that has just kind of made an impact on your career, inspired you as a musician. Inspired you. Yeah, you know, golly, there's a, there's a lot of them. Um, yeah, I've been a pretty much a lifelong bass player. I play enough guitar and and piano and drums mm-hmm. to understand, you know, what those what those folks are playing, so I can accompany it better. So yeah, most of my I got my bass playing heroes have all been, um, or my musician heroes have all been bass players. Mm-hmm. Uh, the great Donald Duck Dunn, Memphis mm-hmm. player, certainly has a influence on how I play. Um, the fellow who played in the Beatles, that guy Paul mm-hmm. McCartney, you know. He, yeah, I've heard of him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Certainly in there. And uh, the great blues player Willie Dixon, you know, again, very, very strong, simple players have always in, inspired me, uh, musically speaking. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Well, those are all of the questions I have for you. Uh, thanks so much for talking to me. This is great. Well, certainly. Well, thank you again, McKenna, for reaching out, and I am appreciative of the the New Music Alliance for uh, you know shining the spotlight mm-hmm. on the on local folks. You just heard an interview with Grammy-nominated Western Mass bassist Paul Kochansky. This is McKenna Canty signing off for the New Music Alliance, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping the careers of Western New England artists who write original music.